Uh, welcome back, everybody. I'd like to thank those of you that have uh, taken the time to subscribe. Definitely appreciate that. So today we're going to take a look at the Forster Coax uh, single stage reloading press. I really, really, really like this press. Uh, it's incredibly versatile for a single stage. I think it's the best one out there. Many people seem to agree. Um, I, I was referred by friends that own them, but uh, let's take a look at some of the, the features that make this thing, you know, the, the de facto standard, I guess, for single stage presses. So we'll start at the, the top of the unit here. Here's the priming setup. So as you pull the handle forward, you'll notice that uh, the piece that's mounted on the top of the rams that holds the shell moves, and the priming setup itself actually is fixed. So there you go. So better look at this. So this obviously is... Uh, adjustable to fit any size case. You don't have to purchase uh, different shell holders. Um, that's good and bad, I suppose, right? If you're loading cases with uh, multiple size case heads, then you know, you're know you constantly going to have to be messing around with that. But um, a lot of guys that reload uh, bolt rifle, you know, the standard 308 case head size is the most common out there. So you just set it for that and brass slides in and out of there pretty easily then. So uh, using the, the primer uh, setup on here, though, is a little little bit of a pain. Um, you know, you've got to put your primer uh, in here by hand, manually. Um, make sure, it, obviously, it's got to be facing the correct way. But put your primer in and then pull this forward a little bit so that that goes down underneath the, uh, the deck there. And then slide your piece of brass in, and then you simply push forward, and it'll seat your primer into your brass for you. So that works. Uh, it's very repeatable um, because that, that primer stem does screw into uh, the top of the press. Uh, there's not really any way to, you know, accidentally seat a primer deeper. Um, I suppose you could seat one a little shallow if you, if you don't run the handle all the way. But uh, so it's very repeatable. It's nice. Um, I used it for quite some time uh, until I got that, that competition primer seater in the other review there. Um, and if I didn't have the competition primer seater, I'd, I'd still be using this and wouldn't have any complaints. So it definitely gets the job done. <clears throat> so the next thing you see here is where the dies go right there. All right. So in other single stage presses, uh, and even progressives like the Dylan, the, uh, the dies thread directly into the the press, or I guess in the in the case of a Dillon, there's a, a tool head so you can swap them quickly. But uh, um, with the Forster, you'll see here the dies actually thread into a collar, right? So all these dies that, that I've got sitting here, um, these are all set and ready to go. I don't have to screw with them every single time I want to change cartridges that I'm going to load, right? You just grab the one that you need, and then it snaps in. Just like that and you're done um, one of the other things that's that's really nice about that though is that you'll notice that die has some wobble to it right now why is this important a lot of guys are sitting there saying oh well geez I, I don't want my dies moving around while I'm loading and you know stuff needs to be all tight and set exactly where I want it to be and, and so forth well <clears throat> your your length is set by this uh, this collar right here uh, so you don't have to worry about the die moving up and down at all and the reason that you do want the die to be able to move just a little bit like this and kind of float is so that when you run that piece of brass up into the bottom of the die, that die is free to move around to exactly align with that piece of brass that you're running up into it. So you get very, very little run out on your cases. Um, I mean, I have a, a Hornady run out gauge around here somewhere. Maybe I'll do a review on that. But honestly, I got the thing and... and check the run out on, on some of the ammo that was being loaded on this thing and decided it wasn't worth my headache anymore. You know, I was, I was getting ammo that was spot on or had like 1,000 to run out. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Um, and I'm sure part of that is, is dies as well, and, and we can get into dies at a, a different uh, episode. But, um, yeah, so this, this is very good uh, that this floats around. And so in conjunction with that, then, is the method that you uh, actually put the brass in here. 
So you'll notice that uh, there is no no different shell holder. You know, for like this little press here next to it, it's got my uh, my comparator gauge in there, right? We reviewed that already. So this one, you need uh, the individual shell holders uh, when you're gonna use uh, you know different cartridges. It's got a different uh, different size case head, right? So with the the Forester, you'll notice as I go up, that just closes up, All right? So that's spring loaded. That's very very nice. Um, and there are two sizes. You see the the S there. Um, so that's for uh, smaller size cartridges. You know, if you're going to do uh, 223 or, or blackout or something like that on here, or you know, any of the, the smaller size case heads, um, you just loosen those two uh, those two Allen screws there and uh, pull that off, flip those pieces around, and then tighten that back down and use the small side. But uh, there's, so there's several nice things about this. It uh, it makes putting brass in there and, and retrieving the brass from there incredibly easy, right? So just drop a piece of brass in, literally. You don't even, you don't have to slide anything, you know, nothing. And then as soon as you pull up just a little bit, those jaws grab a hold of that piece of brass, right? So when I'm, when I'm loading and I put cases in there that are full of powder, um, I'll pull this handle up just a little bit to grab a hold of that case before I reach over and grab the bullet. That way when I come over with a bullet, if I happen to bump that case, I don't knock it over and, and falls off the press. So, uh, and then obviously, you know, spilling your powder all over the place, right? And then when you're finished, you go back down and you'll see those jaws open and then you just grab that piece of brass and it comes right out of there. And that's accomplished by that little point right there. You'll see that, that spike. Um, so that, that spike just drives those, uh, drives those jaws apart, just like that. And so this uh, this press does come with uh, a little jar on the bottom that, that'll catch um, uh, spent primers if you're going to do decapping on here. I don't do decapping on any of my uh, my regular presses, the the Forster or the other ones, uh, for that matter. I do it all on that that little Lee press there that I already reviewed with the universal decapping die. Um, I, I just don't like to decap on my presses. Um, even pistol rounds, I just all that, you know, dirt and crap and, and grime from, you know, spent powder dust and so forth gets all over the press and makes a mess. You got to clean them more frequently. Uh, and with bulk gun ammo, you know, most of that I, um, I do clean in stainless media, uh, which we'll save for another video. But uh, you, in order to get the primer pockets clean, that's got to be decapped. And uh, there's not any point in um, tumbling brass in stainless. It's already been sized. Uh, at least with, with my method, but again, we'll uh, we'll cover that in a later video. So, uh, construction of this thing is great. Uh, as you can see, it's got um, two uh, two ram or well, I guess rams you want to call them or guide rods or I'm I'm not exactly sure. I'm not an engineer, but then you've got two uh, two levers and on, on, you know one on each side uh, for the handle. And so the amount of uh, the amount of force that's required, this this press is very very easy to operate. Um, and it, it makes very concentric ammo. The, the, like I said, the shell holder piece is very nice. The fact that the die floats to get you concentric ammo is great. Uh, the, the priming system I would rate as, um, oh, I'd, I'd give it, uh, on a scale of one to five, I guess, for repeatability, I'd give it a five, but on, uh, speed and ease of use, I'd say probably like a, a two maybe. Um, cause once again, you've got to put primers in there individually by hand and uh, it, it is rather slow so uh, that, that's it for the uh, the coax I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, don't forget to subscri subscribe and uh, for further discussion feel free to stop by precisionrifleforms.com thanks